Okay, we just got done watching a video talking about what binomial situation is. Well, now we're going to actually start solving some binomial problems. So here's the first video talking about how to solve binomial problems. We're only going to do one, one problem in this video, so it should be nice and short, but really focus on the process of how I'm solving this problem. Okay, here's the problem. There's a 13% chance a person randomly chosen is left-handed. Consider five randomly selected people. Let X be how many of those people are left-handed. So first, let's make sure that we understand that this is a binomial situation by checking our bins. B-I-N-S. B stands for binary. There are two things that can happen. You could be left-handed or you cannot. Success is being left-handed. Failure is everything else being not left-handed. That's easy. Independent. I have to assume that one person being left-handed is not going to affect the next person being left-handed, so I should have independence. N means I must be given a specific number of trials. I was given that there are five people I'm going to look at, so that is met. And finally, the probability of success must stay the same, which means that every single person has a 13% chance of being left-handed. That probability is not changing as we move on. So the first thing I want to do is identify in this problem what I call P. P is the probability of success, 0.13. One, three. We therefore have Q. Q is what we just use as the probability of failure. Well, you could use technically any letters you want here. I just use P and Q. So P is the probability of success. Q is the probability of failure, which is pretty easy to find, 0.87. That means a success to me is being left-handed. A failure is anything else. So there's our values. Now, they want us to determine, or they want us to create a probability model here where capital X is how many of those people are left-handed. So I'm going to make a capital X here, and I'm going to think about my options. I could have zero people that are left-handed, one, two, three, four, or all five people could be left-handed. Now, the point of this video is for us to now try to find the probabilities of these things occurring. And this is where we run into a little bit of a problem. What we have to do is do one at a time and just slowly think what is happening here. Now, I will say that there are two of them that are extremely easy, so let's knock out the two easy ones right away. The first is that there's nobody left-handed. The only way that you could have nobody be left-handed is um, five straight failures. So if I'm trying to find the probability that... I have nobody left-handed, x equals zero, that could only look one way. Failure, 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 failure. None of the five people are left-handed. That means I have 0.87 raised to the fifth. I have five straight people that are failures. So 0.87 raised to the fifth. That's fairly easy to figure out. 0.87 <coughs> raised to the fifth on my calculator here is 0.4984. 0 0.4984, 0 0.4984. That's pretty easy. That's pretty simple. Now, the other one that's pretty easy is all five people are left-handed. So this is the probability that x equals five. All five people are left-handed. Well, again, this can only happen one way. Success, 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 success. All five people are left-handed. That is 0.13 to the fifth. Everybody's left-handed, 0.13 to the fifth. Very, very easy to figure out there. So once again, I'm going to grab my calculator. I don't know why my calculator is not popping up here. Sorry. Hopefully you can grab your calculator on your own. 0.13 raised to the fifth is extremely rare, actually. The probability of this happening is point. Now watch out. There's an e to the negative fifth there. So you actually have to move the decimal four times, five times, which creates four zeros. 0 0.00037. So it's very rare to have everybody be left-handed here. So uh, there's my calculator right there. Sorry, I don't know why it wasn't working there. So let me show you this. 0.13 raised to the fifth is, again, look at that e to the negative 5. That means move the decimal to the left five times. That's going to create four zeros there, 0. 0.000037. Okay, now, all of the other ones are kind of tricky. So let's break them down one at a time. So I'm actually going to need some space here to understand this. Let's find the probability that exactly one person is left-handed. Now, the issue with this is that this can happen several different ways. All I need is one success and obviously four failures. So I could have that success happen on the first person, and the remaining four are all failures. I can have that success happen on the second person, the remaining are failures. I can have that success happen on the third person, the remaining are failures. I can have that success happen on the fourth person, the remaining are failures. Or I can have that um, success happen on the fifth person and the remaining are failures. Now, the idea is that there's five different ways that I can have one person successfully be left-handed, and then obviously four not be left-handed. 
And I have to assume that all of these different ways are possible. Now, here's the good news, if any, is the probability of these, four, of these five options is all the same. Every one of these has one person being left-handed, and they have f uh, four people not being left-handed. So every single one of these is the same. Let me make that four a little bit cleaner there. So every single one of these does have the same probability. 0.13 to the first, that's for the one person that's left-handed. 0.87 to the fourth, that's for the four people that are not. But the idea is that where that success happens does create five different, distinctly different scenarios. So I do need to multiply this by five. So the probability that's, that one person is left-handed is five times 0.13 to the first times 0.87 to the fourth. Now that's not overly complicated to figure out. I could actually use my calculator really quickly to get that number. 5 times 0.13 raised to the first times 0.87 raised to the fifth. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, fourth. Um, four people would be not left-handed. And I get 0 0.3724, 0 0.3724. So I get an answer of 0.3724. Now, that's not too complicated to figure out, but it did involve a little bit of thinking there, and that's kind of tough. Now, let's move on and find the probability that two people are left-handed. Okay, well, this actually gets even tougher, because now I need two people to be successfully left-handed and the three not to be. So that could be my first two are successes, my other ones are not. I could have a success at the beginning, and then three failures in the middle, and a success at the end. I could have um, th uh, three straight failures and then successes. I mean, and now the problem becomes, how do I know that I've thought of every possibility? What if I missed a possibility, and then I get nervous that I messed something up? And this is why I want to find a shortcut for you. But the good news is, once again, if you think about this scenario, however many options there are here, they all do look the same. They're all going to have two successes and three failures. Two people left-handed, 0.13 squared. Three people not left-handed, 0.87 to the third. The problem is, how many different ways can this happen? And to understand that, we need to have another quick little side lesson here. The idea is it's called combinations. You might have learned about it back in geometry, but it's called combinations. What we want to do is if we have five people, one, two, three, four, five. We want to figure out how many different ways can I have two of them be chosen to be left-handed, right? It could be these two, could be uh, these two, could be these two. Again, how many different ways can it happen? Well, there's actually a way for us to find how many ways it can happen very, very quickly. It's called combinations. And what we do here is the mathematical symbol for this. There's actually two of them. We're going to do five people choose two of them. Now, again, this may look familiar from geometry, but what we're doing here is we have five total people, and we're choosing two of them to be left-handed. The C stands for choose, or actually stands for combination as well. Now, the way that we present this in statistics class is like this, five and a two underneath it in parentheses. Now, that does not mean five divided by two. Notice I did not draw a division line. This is just an idea. It's a concept. It's a theory that I have five people, and I'm going to choose two of them. Generically, n is how many total people you have, and x is how many you're going to choose to be successful. Now, the formula to figure this out is actually a little bit complicated. Um, let me show you in generic form here. So what we're doing is we're having n people, we're choosing x of them. The formula for this is n factorial divided by x factorial times n minus x factorial. Now, you might be sitting at home right now being like, what? Mind blown. I don't understand what we're talking about here. Well, you'll see why. I'm going to make it nice and simple for you. But remember what a factorial is. For example, 6 factorial is nothing more than 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. It's multiplying all the way down to 1. So even this formula right here is not that bad. It's not overly complicated. So if I want to do 5 choose 2, that's going to be 5 factorial on top, 5 total people, um, 2 factorial on the bottom, 5 minus 2, which is 3 factorial. So I end up with 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 on top. On the bottom, I have 2 times 1. And then I also have, again, 5 minus 2 is 3. So that's going to be 3 times 2 times 1. So you could cancel a lot of stuff out here. For example, the 3, 2, 1, and the 3, 2, 1 will cancel. So basically, I just get 20 divided by 2, which is 10, which means that if I go all the way back up here, when I was thinking about how many different ways I could have two successes out of 5, the answer is 
10. There are 10 different ways you could do it. Now, I want to show you a couple of shortcuts. I understand that this formula isn't the prettiest thing to use. This is what I need you to remember right here, right? This is the idea. Five choose two. We're having five people and we're choosing two of them. Now, there is a very convenient shortcut for this on your calculator. What you do is you type the five in first, so five total people. Hit math, slide over to PRB, and go down to NCR. So you have the 5 is the N, now you need the R. Now, I call it X, but the calculator calls it R. Please understand that R is just how many people you're choosing from the 5. So I'm choosing 2. So 5, choose 2. So this is telling me, okay, I have 5 people, I want to choose 2 of them to be successes. There's 10 different ways that can happen. So there's 10 different ways that you could have 2 out of 5 people be successful. Now, remember the good news, and I'm trying to show you that there is some good news here, is that all of those 10 different ways, you do not have to list them all. You just have to know that there are 10 different ways it can happen. All of them look like this, 0.13 squared and 0.87 to the third. Because when you're multiplying, order doesn't really matter. But you do need to know that there's 10 different ways this can happen. But all 10 look the same, 0.13 squared, 2.13s, 2 left-handers, 3 non-left-handers. So again, now that I was able to figure that out, I'm going to go to my calculator, 10 times 0.13 raised to the second times 0.87 raised to the third. And I get 0 0.1113. 0 0.1113. 0 0.1113. 0 0.1113. 0 0.1113. Okay. Now, let's go back up here and kind of fill in what we know so far. We found the probability of exactly 1 is 0.3724, and the probability of 2 is 0.1113. Now, I want to just kind of go back to 1. I want to make sure everybody understands that, okay? Look, I could use my calculator for that too. 5, math, choose 1. There are five different ways that you can have five people and choose one of them to be successful. Now, that wasn't too bad. I kind of thought of it on my own, but you can use the calculator to help you out there as well. Okay? Now, let's go ahead and let's finish the rest of these. We have three and four left to do. Okay. Let's find, let me use a different color here so I could create some space, uh, the probability that X is equal to three people. Now, once again, here's what you need to remember, is that, there's a lot of different ways that this can happen. Again, I'll just give you one of them. I could have success, fail, success, success, fail, fail. Uh, wait a minute, that would be six people. I'm sorry. <laughs> there you go. Um, success, fail, success, success, fail. That is one of the many options that you could have here. Now, the good news is, I'm trying to convince you there is some good news, is that all of those options are going to look like this. Three people that are successfully left-handed, and two people that are not left-handed. So that should be easy to understand. The idea is, what's the question mark? And that's what we're going to need our calculator. So on our calculator here, we're going to grab 5, and we're going to go math, slide over to PRB, go down to NCR, so 5, choose 3. So now we want to figure out how many different ways can you have 5 people and choose 3 of them to be successful. And that tells us that there are 10 ways for this as well. So now I'm going to come back over here. I now know, no longer have a question mark there. I know that there are 10 different ways that this can happen. All right, before I calculate that, let's do four real quick. What's the probability that I have exactly four people? Well, once again, the easy part is understanding that I'm going to have four people left-handed and one person that's not left-handed. So there's my five total people, four left-handed, one that's not. But how many different ways can that happen? That's where I need my calculator. Five, math, slide over to PRB, and go down to NCR, and I want to choose four. So this is five people, choose four of them, be successfully left-handed, and there are five different ways that can happen. So that is where I get a five right there. Now I just got to actually calculate these probabilities. So let's do three first. So that's going to be 10 times 0.13, raised to the third times 0.87 raised to the second. So that's the probability of three people being left-handed. Now let's do four people. Five different ways it can happen times 0.13 raised to the fourth times 0.87 raised to the first and I get 0 0.0012. So 0 0.0166 for three 0.0166, and for four people, I need to look at it again, for four people, it was 0 0.0012, 0 0.0012. So let me come back up here and fill in this real quick. The uh, probability for three people, we calculated to be 0 0.0166. The probability for four people was 0 0.0012. All right, so that is how you fill in the chart. Now, again, 
I get the idea that there's an easy part to it. The easy part is understanding how to set up the numbers 0.13 and 0.87. The hard part is figuring out how many different ways that can happen. Well, hopefully you understand how to use the shortcut on your calculator to make that a little bit easy for you. Now, one thing you can do at the end is to add all these together. Because we rounded it, we might not get precisely exactly one might be a little bit off like 0.99999 or 1.000 but it should be fairly close it's a nice way to check and hopefully you understand how I was able to do that so just to kind of understand a um, general form here if I'm trying to find the probability that x equals little x right okay understand that I have to first figure out n choose x I have to figure out how many different ways I can have n people and choose x of them once you figure that out you need to have the probability of success which I call p and that's raised to the x so you're gonna have x successes and then you're gonna have q raised to the n minus x again n minus x would just be how many failures you have for example right if I have let's just talk about if I have 10 people and I want to choose three successes what that's going to look like is this. It's going to be 10 people, choose 3. This is simply going to figure out how many different ways it can happen. Then I'm going to have P to the 3rd, 3 successes, and I'm going to have the Q to the 7th. 10 minus 3 is 7, so if I have 3 successes, I obviously have 7 failures. Just understand this part right here is kind of what's new to us. That's the part that figures out how many different ways it can happen. All right, hopefully the video helped explain that. Get ready for the next two videos for a couple more examples.